Okay, so this is my very messy chart <laughs> for preliminary injunction, order of attachment, and TRO. And I'm going to attempt to go through it in the book instead of on that disaster of a chart. Again, we're only talking about a preliminary injunction. I'm doing the video on preliminary injunction first, then I'm going to go back to a video on TRO, and then I'm going to do a video comparing all three with that chart. So basically everything that I have underlined in the like aqua color, that is relating to a preliminary injunction only. A preliminary injunction may be granted in any action where it appears that the defendant threatens or is about to do or is doing or procuring or suffering to be done an act in violation of the plaintiff's rights respecting the subject of the action and tending to render the judgment ineffectual or in any action where the plaintiff is demanded and will be entitled to judgment restraining defendant from the commission or continuance of an act which if committed or continued during the pendency of the action would produce injury to the plaintiff a preliminary injunction may only be granted on notice to the defendant Notice to the motion may be served with the summons or at any time thereafter and prior to judgment. A preliminary injunction to restrain a public officer, board, or municipal corporation of the state from performing a statutory duty may be granted only by the Supreme Court at a term in the department in which the officer or board is located or in which the duty is required to be performed. So again, a preliminary injunction to restrain like a public corporation of the state or officer may only be granted by the Supreme Court at a term in the department in which the officer or board is located or in which the duty is required to be performed. Two, notice of motion for preliminary injunction to restrain state officers or boards under the provision of the section must be upon notice served on defendant or respondent, state officers or board, and must also be served on the attorney general by delivery delivery of such notice to an assistant attorney general at an office of the attorney general in the county in which the venue of the action is designated or if there is no office in the county then the office of the attorney general at the nearest such county so 6312 talks about motion papers undertakings and issues of fact again only talking about preliminary injunctions still paragraph a says so a Affidavit, other evidence. On motion for preliminary injunction, the plaintiff shall show by affidavit or such other evidence as may be submitted, one, that there is a cause of action, and either that defendant threatens or is about to do or is doing an act in violation of the plaintiff's rights respecting the subject of the action and tending to render the judgment ineffectual, or that there is a cause of action and that the plaintiff has demanded and would be entitled to judgment restraining defendant from commission or continuance of an act which if committed or continued during pendency of the action would produce injury to the plaintiff now for a preliminary injunction the plaintiff the plaintiff shall give an undertaking shall give an undertaking except in section 2512 that's the only exception here Okay, so 2512, this is called undertaking by the state, municipal, corporation, or public officer. And even though this is not on the exam, sometimes it's really important to know what an exception is um, because this is referenced so clearly and it will make sense when reading other articles. So what this says is any provision of law authorizing or requiring an undertaking to be given by a party shall be construed as excluding the state a domestic municipal corporation or public officer in behalf of the state or of such a corporation where an appeal is taken by such party only the court to which the appeal is taken may fix the amount which shall limit the liability for damages pursuant to this section so only the appellate court can fix the amount of liability a plaintiff shall give an undertaking the court fixes the amount of the undertaking and if it's finally determined that he or she was not entitled to an injunction they have to pay the defendant all damages and costs which may be sustained by reason of the injunction including if the injunction is to stay proceedings in another action in another action on any grounds other than a report verdict or decision was obtained by actual fraud 
All damages and costs which may be or have been awarded in the other action to the defendant, as well as damages and costs which may be awarded to him or her in the action in which the injunction was granted. Or if the action to save proceedings in an action to recover real property or for dower on any ground other than a verdict, report, or decision was obtained by actual fraud, all damages and costs which may be or have been awarded to defend it in the action in which the injunction was granted, including reasonable rent and profits and any waste committed upon the real property. Or, if injunction is to state proceedings upon a judgment for a sum of money on any ground other than that the judgment was obtained by actual fraud, the full amount of the judgment as well as all damages and costs which may be awarded to defend it in the action in which the injunction was granted. Issues of fact, provided that the elements required for issuance of preliminary injunction are demonstrated in plaintiff's papers, the presentation by the defendant of evidence sufficient to raise an issue of fact as to any of such elements shall not in itself be grounds for denial of the motion. In such event, the court shall make a determination by hearing or otherwise whether each of the elements required for issuance of a preliminary injunction exists. 6314, this is where they start like combining the two. A defendant enjoined by a preliminary injunction may move at any time on notice to the plaintiff, on notice to the plaintiff, to vacate or modify it. To vacate or modify it. As a condition to granting an order, vacating or modifying a preliminary injunction, a court may, may require defendant, defendant, except where defendant is a public body or officer to give an undertaking in an amount to be fixed by the court. That the defendant shall pay to the plaintiff any loss sustained by reason of the vacating or modifying the order. Okay, so if you want to ascertain damages sustained by preliminary injunction, you can make an order to show cause, and they may be ascertained upon motion on such notice to all interested persons as the court shall direct, where the defendant enjoined was an officer of a corporation or joint stock association or representative of another person, and the amount of the undertaking exceeds the damages sustained by defendant by reason of the injunction. The damages may also be ascertained. The amount of the damages... So ascertained is conclusive upon all persons who were served with notice of the motion and such amount may be recovered by the person entitled thereto in a separate action. 